morning. I'm out here harvesting for a pop-up sale today. It's Tuesday and I've just got a lot of blooms so I'm going to open up the stand. It's kind of how I've been running it this summer and it's been working out pretty well. So I'm going to start with some zinnias and I want to just give you a heads up, you know, about the wiggle test. So if you wiggle it and the stem is stiff, then you're good to go. But if you wiggle it and it's all wobbly like that, not good. And this is how I like to work. Everybody's different, but I like to just pick the flowers, leave all the leaves on here, and then bring them over to the bucket and strip into a compost bucket and work like that. I don't like to make messes over in the rows. I just, it's not my style. This works better for me. And then I can just dump this in the compost and it's good. Sometimes with zinnias, you gotta be careful because you can crack the stems. So if I've got a pretty big branch like this, I'll just cut that off. But actually, I think I might just leave that for interest. Look at that one. Super pretty. This is what we want. The snapdragons are on their second flush, and I keep having some. It looks like they were melted almost. Let me show you. Not sure what that is, but I just picked those off because the rest are good. So I've kind of figured out a good way to incorporate these Cherokee Sunset Rudbeckia into bouquets that don't just scream fall. Um, so I'm going with the chocolate and wine theme. Uh, I'll show you that in a second, but really just going with more kind of moody purpley red colors and then combining that with this kind of chocolatey color and I think it works out really nicely and it looks uh, kind of high end. <laughs> so I really like the way that those look. And these Cherokee Sunset ones have just been so awesome. They just constantly bloom and I'm just constantly cutting on them and there's always more that I can use. So I really, really like them. I, I feel like I've never talked to you through how I make a bouquet, so let's do that. <laughs> so I start with a spray of something kind of sturdy and bulky. So this time I'm starting with some Bupleram. I'm going to add in this Dara. Uh, just because that fills it out really nicely. And then I just start adding in um, the same type of flower so that I can get it all around the entire spin. And then I just spin as I add. And when I harvest Cosmos, I try to get a spray as much as I can over like a single stem. So there, now I have it all around and now I'm going to add some other flowers. And I like to add my spikes after I already have some bulk built in, otherwise the spikes end up all smashed together. The trick with the spiral is the lower that you hold it, the more splayed out the flowers will be. The higher you hold it, the tighter it will be. So you can adjust your hand placement to kind of adjust that. I kind of like that. Okay, so right now I'm at, I'm at 10 stems and I've been doing 14 to 17 for a $20 bouquet. It, it depends on how wimpy some of the stems are, but this is a good one since it has some sprays of Cosmos. I think I'm gonna go chocolatey. And this one has sprays too, so I don't need to use so many stems. And obviously a spray is one stem that has multiple blooms on it. And then as I'm adding, I'm making sure just to do a second check to make sure I don't have anything with lots of bug damage. This one's got bug damage, so I'm going to just chop it off. Compost. There we go. Yeah. It's kind of fun, right? 
Then we trim up the stems. Then I just trim to whichever one is the shortest and I double check that the shortest one, if I can adjust it, and then I just trim. There we go. And then you just add the rubber band where you've been holding it. I did add the queen lime red in here so it goes a little bit of a different color but what I mean by like the chocolate and wine combo is these kind of purpley colors right with these kind of chocolatey colors and I think it works out really nice and then you can add some kind of limey green colors in here and I think it adds a nice pop and then this is kind of like a dusty wine color which I think works works very nice so yeah there we go all right round two so I got some pink shades going on that I want to put together. I typically do end up starting with some Dara. And I just try to start with the stems that are super long. This is really short, so I don't want to use that. So here we're at 15 stems and it's kind of not filling out enough, so I will add more filler in here. But I want to get my focal. That's 18 stems, but it's just little scabiosas that are really adding up. So, and I think I need some greenery, so I'm going to add some mint. All right, this is apple mint. I've been using orange mint in a lot of my other bouquets. Last one, got a little more filler in here. Cosmos have been producing like crazy. I only have a couple plants and I <laughs> use these in like every bouquet. This one's 18, so kind of filling them up today. I usually don't do so many, but you know, I think it looks nice. So it takes me a little over an hour to figure out what flowers I'm going to harvest and how I'm going to arrange them, then to harvest, arrange, wrap 
and then set the stand up. Pretty proud of that for four, four bouquets, so an hour and eighty dollars. It's decent. So I will add that I'm displaying these in the shorter buckets, and I probably should use the tall ones in terms of like flower support. But this is better because it angles the bouquets out, and so it catches people's eyes. I've tried both ways, doing the tall ones and the short ones, and I get way more traffic when I use the shorter buckets. So just a little tip. <laughs> so I got the stand open. I'm going to post on Facebook that I'm open and my Instagram stories and then we'll see how it goes. See you later. Alright, so it's just about 8 o'clock. I usually stay open till about dusk uh, and I only sold one bouquet and I'm not sure what's going on because first of all, this is the first time I featured like a dinner plate dahlia in one of my bouquets. I, I'm pretty sure this is Kit's Perfection. Uh, it came to me not labeled but that's what I'm thinking it is. And like pinky colors, you know, everybody loves them, right? And I've got the sunflowers. So I sold one kind of sunflower bouquet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is because the other thing too is so the way that I'm selling is that I post on my Facebook page each day that I have the stand open and I post a picture of what's available. Uh, and then I've been also posting on my Instagram story which shares to my Facebook story so there's two ways that people can see that I'm open uh, I don't have a lot of customers on Instagram but there's a few so I do post on there that's how I've been advertising and today I decided to share that post onto the Facebook page for my local town uh, and I got you know almost 800 people engaged in that post and quite a few people um, you know interacting with that and yet one sale which is like worse than some days when I don't even post really anything. So, I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing that makes me think about maybe doing a subscription for bouquets for next year. Um, I think that that could be a really good option because it, it's kind of sad to see these beautiful flowers not end up in a home. I mean, that, I'll enjoy them in my home. <laughs> and some of these I will hang up to dry. While I'm here, let me show you that. So you're going to see another part of my house that you've never seen. So this is our spare bedroom slash office. And in here is my drying rack. So I have been drying flowers to use for wreaths. And um, I'm trying a bunch of different things that I've never dried before. So I've got some fever few that's looking really awesome. That's a good dried flower. Straw flower, obviously. Um, poppy heads. And then I'm also drying roses. Um, they're drying really well. Other things that are drying really well are astilbe heads. And astilbe is really great as a cut flower for a lot of different reasons. But the first reason is because you can use it as a cut flower for just about any stage. So you can do it when it's colored up in the color it should be. Then when it fades to like a green color. And then even when it fades to a brown color. And you can um, harvest that and dry that at any stage. And it'll dry it whatever color that it is at that point. Um, so I do. Here's some astilbe here. Sunflower and Rubecchia, so I'm going to dry some of those that are in those leftover bouquets. And I plan to use these in wreaths. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to like attend a fall market, craft fair type thing or something. We have some of those locally well, where I will feature some handmade dried flower bouquets. And the other thing I've got is right here on the screen. Let me show you. So it probably doesn't look like much, um, but I'm drying loose rose petals and the calendula heads that I'm not cutting because I don't really enjoy them in bouquets. Um, I'm also drying some bachelor buttons, the blue ones. My plan with these is to make some bath salts with dried flowers in them and that will extend my sales into fall because definitely going to still need to make some money to cover my QuickBooks expense and some of those other reoccurring expenses that I will have in the off season. And it never hurts to make more money, right? And one note too about calendula. Uh, I was reading this actually in this book here. I thrifted this at an antique store the other day and I was reading through and it has a lot of good information and recipes and stuff. But it does say that uh, if you're using calendula, you should pull the petals off of the, the little bud part, the green part, and so that you just use the petals in whatever concoction that you're making because that is considered higher quality even though in modern days people find that bud to be kind of aesthetic. I'm thinking about the kinds of mixes that I'm going to make and I have some some really fun ideas and you don't need a lot of flower essence to add into there so I think it also would be very cost efficient. I think the most expensive thing that I was looking at so far would be getting the labels printed. Let me know if you make basalts or extra things with your dried flowers. I, I'm interested to see what you do. Oh hey, 
It is Wednesday evening and we are in a heat advisory right now so I'm kind of in a pickle because my coworkers have ordered a total of five bouquets for tomorrow and I have to go into the office and I have to leave a little bit before seven. I know I'm not going to have time in the morning to make all of those bouquets and harvest the flowers. Uh, but it's a little too hot <laughs> so I'm hoping that it's gonna cool down here in the next hour or so hopefully then I can condition them here in the air conditioning in my house and <sighs> so I have some basil that I really want to use in my bouquets but I'm definitely not gonna do that because I don't have enough time to condition that and it's sensitive to being harvested at the wrong temperature <sighs> so I'm fortunately gonna skip that and I think I'm honestly I think I'm just gonna kind of hodgepodge it I don't have a whole bunch of blooms really that are like cohesive I try to make recipes in terms of ingredients so the lines the discs the focals the greenery that kind of stuff so I got a bunch of buckets and I'm gonna fill them up and I do like to harvest into floral preservative and you just need a little sprinkle of this by the way too inside your bases and in your buckets just a sprinkle so I got this at the beginning of the season and I've barely made a dent and I've used I've used it a bit. So don't overuse this. Save yourself some bucks. So we're gonna load up a bunch of different buckets so that I can sort my ingredients and then I'll have another bucket Well, I will put the finished rack bouquet. Another thing too is that I did actually buy these buckets from Johnny's. Uh, I, I got some of those uh, buckets from the grocery store florist and you know they were doing great but they're so flimsy. So if you grab it wrong, you grab the edge and you pull it up and it's filled with water, it's going to break all over. And then yeah, if you heard the horror stories about stacking wet buckets together and never getting them apart, it is true. <laughs> so honestly these buckets are not so expensive, you know, and they've got the little shorties. And they also have the taller ones, which I usually harvest into and then I display in these ones. They're really not that expensive, and I only have a couple of each kind, and money well spent. Well, well spent. And they're so durable, and they don't tip over. I've had a couple instances where the circle buckets from the florist tipped over on me. Mm -mm. So yeah, these ones are... Awesome. Alright, so I'm just going to go through and harvest all of the different types, get my fillers, my discs, some greenery, some spikes, and we'll see what I come up with. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes and it's getting dark, so let's go inside and make these bouquets. So I do have some fun things in here. I have these teddy bear sunflowers. I don't remember what they're called. These are kind of fun ones. And I do have a couple dahlias. My dahlias are so slow to bloom this year. And I think I kind of figured out what the problem is. I just think that where I have my farm located right now, it's just not enough sun. The sun starts hitting that area around 12.30, so it gets afternoon sun, but I just, I really don't think it's enough. So hopefully moving over to the front will be an improvement. Oh yeah, this one is snow cap, I think, the one I got at Walmart. Three bucks. Just already made my return on investment there. <laughs> this one here, this is that unidentified red one that I divided earlier that I think maybe is Babylon Red or something like that. This one here is from Swan Island. I think this is Teddy maybe. Right, and then lots of Rudbeckia to be focals and sunflowers and some zinnias. So I'm going to kind of try to figure out how to make some stuff go. Alright, 17 in that one. Kind of liking that look. Alright, this one has 19 stems and I'm at four bouquets. Right, that's 20 stems in this one. I like it. So now that I have leftovers, I am just going to go back and add them into the left, to the bouquets to fill them out a little bit because why not? They're already cut. Alright, so this one I felt like was a little skimpy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 
looks so perfect. All right, that is it for today. I'm gonna go to work, sell these to my coworkers, and then I'll see you Friday. Friday morning, we're gonna open up the stand because I had posted that I would be open. So we're gonna see what kind of things that we can scavenge up. See you Friday. All right, it's Thursday evening, and I actually was gonna harvest tomorrow morning and arrange tomorrow morning. But, you know, it cooled down pretty good. It's like 60 degrees, and, you know, I did some evening harvesting. So a little bit sad because my coworker who ordered two bouquets called out sick today. Um, so I had two extra bouquets and I decided to just give them to my other coworker who ordered the three bouquets. Um, because otherwise, you know, what am I going to do with them? A little bit sad I'm lost out on 40 bucks today. Um, but we're going to make some more bouquets and we'll make it back tomorrow. So I've got a really good selection in here. I'm starting to run out of focal flowers though. These next couple days, fingers crossed, some more of those sunflowers open up. Um, but I, ha I have a nice array, so let's make some bouquets. I like to put my sunflowers in last so you can still see them. And I did harvest some basil. This is the cinnamon basil. Beautiful. Very pretty. Smells awesome, too. Oh, there's a bee in my snapdragon. I'm going to go let him free. <laughs> Alright, I like that one. This is 16 Sims. Alright, number two. And yes, I've been in my pajamas, okay? Don't judge me. It's a pajama kind of lifestyle these days. Mm, do we like that? Green? Yeah, I think that's fun. So this is 17 Sims. I didn't think I'd have enough for four, but let's see. I, I think I do. Alright, that's 12. I think I'm going to go get some more Cosmos, and then we'll call that good. So I've been following Sarah's tutorial from Bloom and Gray on, you know, doing the half fold on a square sheet, and then taping down these little bits, and then wrapping around, and then I use my sticker to uh, put it all together. But, I'll be honest, it's really hard to photograph that in the wrap get the logo and like make it look attractive and I kind of want to I just want to like take it to the next level so if anytime you're thinking about wrapping and things like that packaging think about your costs so each one of these sheets costs me four cents and a sticker costs seven cents so a wrap the way that I've been doing it costs well and then like you know de minimis kind of one staple and a little microscopic piece of tape uh, but one wrap has been costing me 11 cents. But I almost kind of wonder if it'll work without the tape. Come on, try it. Well, let's do it on this fun pink and green one first. And I will say that on smaller bouquets, that kind of wrap style works really well. The traditional one I've been doing. The bigger ones, it doesn't look so great in my opinion. Just do that and put a sticker on it. I think I just found a new way to do it. Like, how does that look better? I'm going to tell you my secret and how I get away with storing flowers and not having a cooler. Well, I live somewhere that gets cold at night. <laughs> so I think it's going to get to 58 degrees tonight, and that's colder than in my house. And these are just going to hang out outside. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see you tomorrow morning when I open up the stand, and we'll see how these sell. All right, it's a kind of dreary Friday, and I've got the stand stocked up with these nice bouquets, so we'll see how it goes today. 
Also a little bit of an update, this dahlia that's blooming right here is that one that I broke off when I was planting the tubers and look at this, it is a lush healthy plant. So I wonder how many tubers I'm going to get off this one. We'll see. Alright, it's Friday evening and I am quickly throwing together some bouquets. I really only had enough to make this nice bouquet, which I think is actually super cute. Some flowers, cosmos and yarrow and some straw flowers and then some snapdragons and a little blue plurum. I think this is like super cute. But I wanted to kind of give you a little tip or something to think about. So I really like selling wrapped bouquets. Uh, I just like to give people long stems to do what they please with. Uh, and I feel like it's easier to transport them. But I do sell mason jar arrangements using recycled jars. So this is a pasta sauce jar. A couple tricks on this. So first, raffia is super cheap and it goes a long way. I think I spent like less than $4 on a bag of raffia at Walmart and I'm not even halfway through it and I wrap everything in raffia. So a little budget saving trick there. And the other thing is, you know, if you've got little shorty stems, like uh, my amaranth, this is how tall my amaranth is. <laughs> Use them. Put them in your mason jars. Like, mason jars need micro stems. So that is how I use those up and still make some money off of them. The thing is, is I got this micro one that almost, no, it's good, it's good. We'll get it in there. I like to save the buds too and just pop those in. And for these kind of straggler ones, I usually just charge about 10 bucks. When the porch light comes on, you know it's time to close up shop. So let's go see how we did. Three out of four, not too shabby. It's a good day today. I'll see you tomorrow when we stock up the stand again. All right, it's Saturday. I've got two wrap bouquets. Oh, I love these pink ones with the sunflowers. And then I've got my mason jar arrangements. These smell amazing with the basil. So I need to sell all of these bouquets today to meet my 200 a week sales goals. So we'll see how we do. Did you think I was just showing you the setup? Nope, it's, it's 8 o'clock and I did make an extra one today, <laughs> but I didn't sell anything. And you know, it happens. But I have noticed that Saturdays are actually pretty slow. People just seem like they're in a rush to get wherever they're going and they're going somewhere and it ain't to the stand. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm kind of looking at as well as, you know, should I be open on Saturdays? Because they're kind of actually my slower days. So. We'll see, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.